Okay, friends, hope we're still with me. Following up on the Why Doctors Intervene, this is a little introduction to something called stage disclosure. And let me know what you think on the other side. Oops, Daisy. Get out of my way. When we see our doctors, we expect them to be honest and truthful. But are there conditions under which doctors might, and for good reason, not give full information to patients about their medical condition. Prior to the early 1970s, there was no moral requirement in medicine that physicians be truth tellers or that patients have a right to diagnostic and treatment information. Hippocratic tradition had for over 2000 years neglected almost all problems of truthfulness and patients' rights. By tradition, doctors saw themselves only as having obligations to take care of patients. Truth-telling was rarely discussed, and non-disclosure was common. However, beginning around the early 1970s, traditions of physician non-disclosure began to be questioned as a result of some developments in law and ethics that were attempts to protect the autonomy interests of patients. Yet it has never truly been decided how strong a patient's right to the truth is. Still today, two interesting issues are unresolved. First, do you have a right to be told the whole truth by your physician? Second, might physicians intentionally and justifiably withhold information from people like you and me? I'll approach these questions by addressing how health professionals should handle a situation in which a patient has just been told some very bad news. For example, that a test indicates the patient has sustained a serious injury that will require sustained medical attention. After an initial disclosure of the basic facts of the injury, such patients often become agitated and upset. At this point, they've not yet been told the whole package of bad news, including what lies ahead on the road to recovery. For example, such patients may have been told almost nothing about how much pain they will suffer, about the risks and complications of treatment, about how much time must be committed to rehabilitation, about how long they have to live if the injury is life-threatening, about the side effects of the available medical treatments, clinical interventions, about the specialists they'll have to see, about the full course of future procedures, about the financial costs, and so forth. These patients have not lost the capacity for autonomous judgment, but they are also fragile and fearful, and they might be emotionally devastated by additional bad news beyond the initial bad news already received. A great deal of this information could be delayed by the physician and then spread over a period of time. And some of it might never need to be mentioned. So a basic question here is, how much information can the doctor justifiably delay and perhaps never disclose to the patient? Stated more generally, the questions are, is stage disclosure over time a desirable and justifiable strategy in many situations? And is it morally okay if some of the information winds up never being disclosed? To bring these abstract statements of the problem down to the concrete world of medical practice, consider an actual case from rehabilitation medicine that was reported in the Journal of the American Medical Association. Here are the facts in this case. For a month, a physician in a stroke rehabilitation unit has carefully managed information in disclosures with the patient who had suffered a stroke. During the very first session, the patient asked how long it would take for the arm to improve. The doctor was confident that the patient was unlikely to recover significant use of his arm, but the doctor held back on the presentation of his full set of beliefs. Intentionally avoiding a direct answer to the patient's question, the doctor stressed how difficult it is for physicians to make adequate predictions about time or about the extent of recovery. He mentioned that the brain itself needs a chance to heal. The patient seems reasonably satisfied with these answers at the time, and in the conversation that followed, seemed comfortable with this situation of uncertainty. He told the doctor that he greatly fears permanent paralysis and has strong hopes that his recovery will go well. This sort of indefinite and non-committal Yet caring and supportive exchange of views continued, with the physician constantly praising the patient's progress 
despite some clear residual weaknesses. After two weeks of rehabilitation, the patient suddenly became enthusiastic about some parts of his progress. For example, his leg improvement. And he asked the doctor, now, how about my arm? The physician said, the arm may not recover as much as the leg, which was true, but hardly the whole truth. This physician had learned from experience that his patients generally have a strong hope for a return to their previous capabilities and that a straight dose of bad news tends to overpower any good news about the likelihood of progress in rehabilitation. The doctor was convinced that stage disclosure is an appropriate form of medical care of patients and that it is thoroughly justified for at least some patients. Now, to wrap up today's discussion of truth-telling, I leave you with three questions about this case. First, how would you have wanted to be treated in this situation if you were the patient? Second, do you think this doctor failed by not, from the start, telling everything he knew or at least believed about his patient's future? And third, if you had been the doctor in this case, how would you have managed the disclosure of news? So, did the doctor do a good job or not? Turn to your partner and share. No, J.K. Rowling. Um, so what do we have? We've got a doctor taking a stroke patient who is just, you know, in, in the pits, down and out about what her recovery is going to be. And so the doctor knows that she's kind of sad, pressed, you know, in the pits. And so he's like, you know, you can have recovery. There's possibility to pull her this way, right? To give her a boost. So she is thinking clearly and has fewer psychological and mental constraints, right? And then she gets optimistic and says, hey, maybe my arm will be as good as my leg. And the doctor's like, now the psychological constraint isn't sadness right? And fear, now it's hope and almost this like, you know, blind hope, right? And so he's like, hard to say and pulls her back, right? Isn't this exactly what Terrence Ackerman was talking about? You know, figuring out where people are at in their state of illness, right? What's impeding their ability to make smart, you know, true, authentic choices for themselves uh, and pushing them towards that, right? You know, as Ackerman says, the goal of paternalism is to restore autonomy. We're trying to push them towards it. So the question for the discussion board today will be, would you want a doctor to use stage disclosure with you, right? And if you're inclined to say no, give me the hard truth. Pretend like you're an actual human being like everyone else for a minute, you know? and you had had a real life-changing illness or injury just throw itself on your lap, and you were grappling with it, trying to juggle everything you're juggling now, you're in shock maybe, would you be able to think clearly? Hard to say. Um, so have a go at it. One more wonderful flavor of medical paternalism for you to think about, and we will move forward. I will see you all soon.